<laughs> I was waiting for that. I was waiting for that. Couldn't resist. <laughs> no. Couldn't resist. Um, sports. Yes. Should we talk about Mr Lineker, who's out? Yeah, he's well, on no, his way is, out. Well, we don't know. We don't know. I mean, he's look, going. He's going to tweet I'll about it. Some, I'll give you some, uh, some context. Earlier in the week, the Mail Online claimed to have seen an email leaked from the BBC that, that he was going to be out. It was from the head of, uh, head of the BBC Sport as well, Alex Kajelski. And they have since said, or they said quite quickly, to be fair, they couldn't verify how true the email was. So it's there was not a denial, though. No, it's, it's not. But no, this, this is from the Mail on Sunday, sorry. So, yeah. look, lots of, lots of conjecture began over the next sort of 48 hours or so, whether he should stay, lots of debate starting, should he go? And we then... knew he was going, though, didn't we? Because Jermaine Genus was being lined up to take over. Well, no, not necessarily. All we knew was that his contract was expiring. Now, the contract expires mm. on a two- or three-year basis, and it's usually kind of rolling. He, could, he just extends it, usually on more money. Don't forget, he's on a million mm. pounds a year. He's the highest-paid presenter at the BBC. Now, what I would say, though, Stephen, it's, it's the only show... Well, one of the only shows at the BBC in the last 10 years which has actually seen a rise in ratings. Most of the others have... have is not... that down to Gary Lineker, though? I don't think it is. I, well, look, I think he's good. I think he's good at, at what he does. Um, the tragedy of all the stuff about you know, his, his venture into politics in the last three or four years is that nobody remembers, especially the younger generation, just how good a footballer he was. Mm. He was a magnificent England player. He dug us out of so many holes down the years. And nobody really talks about that. They just see him as a kind of presenter. I know the guy who trained him, a guy called uh, Brian Barwick, and... He always said to me that Gary Lineker loves the live element of broadcasting. Now, Match of the Day is, is live, yes it is, but it's not the same as, as live football, an English no, match, no, no. or a Champions League game. He's got plenty of other irons in the fire. I mean, he's 63 years old, so he can't go on forever. He's been is he 20, really? He is. 25 years he's been at Match of the Day. Now, you'll remember Des Lynham. Yeah. And I, I thought he was a, 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 class, a, a class act, actually, but... Who would have said that his successor would probably go on to do the job even better than him? Some do you know do. what? The, I mean, the thing is, I think Gary Lineker is very good on match of I the do, day. Yeah. The problem is he's tarnished his career by the fact he's delving into politics and being controversial in, in his own way. Yes. And, and that sometimes you've got to just put a dividing line between your work life and what you think and do in private. Well, I, I just think the, the venture into, into you know, sounding off about politics in the last three or four years uh, was, was very strategic on his part. I mean, I, I, I interviewed him a few times when I was at the News of the World and he's, he had, a, he had a, a weekly column in the paper and I used to do it sometimes. He was never interested in talking about politics then. And we had a huge reach. That was his opportunity to do it. And I think that it was a bid to stay relevant. I know it's a horrible cliché, but I do think that he did it to kind of, you know, he saw a lot of his contemporaries of the last five, ten years dispense with and cast aside. I just thought he, he may, maybe felt the need to diversify a little bit mm-hmm. to get himself into more, more into the public eye, which you shouldn't really need to do with, them, with Match of the Day. They do attract a view, view Stick to the day of, job. of millions. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, that's, that's true, that's, that's possible. But listen, uh, we'll see. I mean, at the end of, we'll know at the end, end of the year. I don't think they'll enter negotiations until about January anyway, to be honest with you. Well, anyway, let's move on <laughs> to uh, the top stories of the day. We're delighted to be joined by author and broadcaster Jenny Trent Hughes and former Apprentice star Trey Lowe. Good morning to you both. Thank you for returning. Good morning. So many good stories doing the rounds today in the papers uh what about gary lineker so there was this if you're not familiar at home there was this leaked letter doing the rounds a few days ago gary lineker's last show apparently according to bbc bosses was meant to be tonight on the last episode of match of the day they've neither confirmed or denied it which leaves this big cloud of mystery so trey will if he does leave tonight will it be a loss to match of the day oh god it'll be a huge loss he's been there for 25 years right i mean a quarter of a century seen this one face. I don't know. I mean, don't quote me now. I believe it is 25 years that he's been at the helm. However long it's been, it's been a long time to the point that when I think match of the day, really, when I think of great football commentary, I do think Lineker. Even though, I mean, he was a Spurs man for a while and I'm yeah. a gooner. Who but do you support, Trey? I'm a gooner. Yes. Fruit and fruit. Good man. That's what I like. And you, Jenny. Everywhere. Uh, I'm singled yes, out. Indeed. I'm singled out on the sofa. A, seat, a sofa full of who Arsenal you, who fans. Who do you support? <laughs> man United. Uh, United. Oh, man, you're a bit terrible at the moment. But I, 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 I think it's... I mean, why not just say, if he's going to leave, leave. As far as I know, his um, contract goes up to the end of the 2025 season, right? So what's going on? Why is all the mystery? Why apparently he was upset when it was brought up that it was leaked, etc.? Tell us, if you're going to leave, leave, because I'm going to be interested in who is actually going to fill those boots. Do we think that it was sort of not a long time coming, but all the controversy and we were talking about um, Israel and the Middle East conflict and he's weighed in on things such as that? Is this something that we saw being inevitable? Jenny? Uh, I think so, because I think that he's become, over the past couple of years, more socially conscious, more politically active, and they keep trying to 
you clip his wings. Mm -hmm. And at this stage, at this stage of the game, he doesn't need any more fame. Probably doesn't particularly need much more money, and I think he just wants to be himself. He also might be tired of the BBC management by now. Mm. He was doorstepped <laughs> by a, a Daily Mail reporter yesterday at his uh, London home, and did you know what he said? What did he say? He said, "F off." <laughs> Way to go! Short and sweet. <laughs> um, so the Times report this morning: the BBC <laughs> they've refused to disown the draft email announcing Gary Lineker's departure. As claims grow, the Beeb is in witch hunt mode over the leaks. So, interesting. You would have thought if it was rubbish, they would have just said, complete rubbish, don't know what you're talking about, the, the letter's fake. But I guess we'll see tonight on Match of the Day. Um, will he be saying goodbye? Will there be... Uh, It'll be sad. And, it's it's, probably, sad, it's it? probably also a bargaining ploy by one or the other side mm. over contract Ooh, uh, negotiations. Maybe he wants to extend the contract. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he was the leaker. Yeah. Right. All Intrigue. these conspiracies now. <laughs> Who do we think should replace him? Any, any ideas, guys? And, uh, football fans in the studio today. Any? Was, it was going to be Jim, uh, Genus, wasn't it? Yeah, and, and it, without Genus. the controversy, I probably would have said um, Jermaine Genus. I probably would have said because, you know, he's football through and through. I think he's got a bit of charisma. I think you're going to need charisma to. But you're going to need some level of gravitas. You don't think Genus would have had the depth needed? For he's that? twelve. <laughs> right. well, like, if he's 12, I'm like, I know. Oh, mate. I know. God, I should get my I'm not, I'm nine at next, my age. He needs to have silver hair and be sexy, whoever it is. Yeah, fox. I mean, the other guy that does match of the day, too. Um, Mark Chapman. Yeah, I think he would be a, a he, safe, safe pair of hands. He's the favourite to be uh, Lineker's replacement. I just think if you're going to tune into match of the day, you're just there for the football, really. I don't care who presents it. You could get somebody on 100k a year and oh, save I the do. licence fee pairs. Oh, do you think it makes yeah. a difference, though, who yeah, presents it? Yeah. Like Des Lynham and the people like that. Yeah, Des exactly. Lynham. He was the so best. It, it makes a difference when you've got somebody you just think... Yeah. You just, you just know it's going to be worth watching. Oh, I'm swayed. That was sometimes a... games are rubbish, but the, you know, the host makes it interesting. Oh, yeah. my, my flimsy arguments come apart. I agree with that. My favourite um, football uh, analyst, like Thierry Henry, does a really good job. Yeah. Micah he Richards does, yeah. does a good job. Michael Richards is very good. Yeah, mm. he's, he's good, isn't very he? very good. Also... I listen to him on the radio and he's really good. Well, yeah. maybe we might have a, a, a female... Do that. I mean, you got. Is it Gabby? I mean, who, there's Gabby a few. Lo well, yeah, Gabby yeah. There's, there's a few. Alex it could Scott, be anyone. Alex Arsenal, exactly. Would good. be really yeah. good. So mm -hmm. the field is quite open. Is this the last we see of Gary Lineker tonight? No, Dawny, it won't be. I mean, no. let's let's take let's take it. Well, let's strip it back to the start of the week. There was a, an email in the mail, mail online, mm -hmm. and they said that it, it, well, it claimed that they'd seen an email that this was going to be his last show. Now they can't verify whether this email is actually. Uh, true, accurate. So the BBC, though, were moved to make a statement yesterday saying we have nothing to announce. Now, the context of this is that look, last year they were very embarrassed at the BBC. They tried to, tried to flex their muscle on Gary Lineker. They tried to suspend him. And then the staff started walking out and they realised they've got a big problem on their hands because the presenter, they've created a monster. And he's more powerful than the organisation itself. So I don't think that played out well with the BBC bosses. It wouldn't do. And so... I think long term there would have been a strategy to remove him from the company. I don't know this for certain, but the contract is up at the end of the season anyway. Mm. I don't think any negotiations would start until about January. But that's in mindful, Dawn, because it's one of the few shows on the BBC. It's a flagship show. It's been going since 1964. It's one of the few programmes that actually has increased their ratings over the last 10, 15 years or so. But, but the general trajectory has been down for the rest of the, the, the programme, in common with lots of TV. It's interesting, the BBC haven't disowned the email that has leaked, has it? They haven't no. said, no, 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 it's just completely fake, it's nothing to do with us. They haven't said that. No, they haven't. Instead, they've, they've launched a witch hunt for the person that leaked the email. So, yeah, not exactly. exactly fighting their corner. No, but I mean, it's, it looks to me as if it was, if it was a genuine email sent mm. from a BBC account. Uh, I think there were, I'm not going to say the name, but I think somebody I know was, was involved in it, so it tells me that it was quite quite um quite, quite genuine yep. <laughs> but having said that you know they have to be careful he's popular he's popular and i think they have to manage any is departure he? yeah he's popular among, among um i mean look people don't tune into match the day because of gary lineker it's a bit like when you sell your house it's it's the it's not it's not the estate agent that sells your house it's the location it's mm. the decorative order that kind of stuff it's the football that sells the show and gary lineker is part of that the tragedy of all this strategic venture into politics over the last four or five years is that everyone's forgotten what a fantastic footballer he was for England. Yep. There were lots of younger people who don't even know that he was, he, he was one of England's top players. He was, an, he was a record goal scorer for a time. How many times, do you remember, how many times did he dig us out of a hole at World Cups? Oh, God, yeah, no, at I, World I, Cups, I, I, the Euro qualifiers. Great